hello, beautiful people. Ryan here. And I've got a transmission for you. What does that mean? <laughs> so a lot of times when I'm just sitting in silence, I have this impulse that comes up. There's usually like a sentence that just drops in. And then I just know to pick up my phone and start recording. And I don't really know even exactly what I'm gonna say, but I know the theme. <laughs> so this theme is awakening and enlightenment. And what I'm getting is to share my knowings on these and to help create a more stable framework for our tribe around what these words mean. Because both of these words are used a lot in different circles and different religions and and it kind of muddies the water. Because a lot of times when people are using these words, they're really talking about different things. And when people are talking about different things and using the same word, and then they're not aware of it, it just only leads to conflict and confusion. So I'm here to share with you the definitions and what this will do is will give you kind of like some rails as you're moving on your own path, your own journey. You can feel more secure on the rails that you're on and have more reference points for what's happening. And I wish I had these rails when I was going through my process because I had to find them on my own. You know, this idea of enlightenment is so shrouded in mystery, you know, because people have been searching for enlightenment for thousands and thousands of years, and there's really only a handful of people that I'm aware of that history kind of has concluded fits into that category, so I'll name a few, you know, um, Gautama Buddha, and from what I understand, there's really lots of different Buddhas. We talk about Buddha as though it's just one person, Siddhartha. <laughs> But Buddha just means the enlightened one. Okay, so it's, a, it's really a term that is meant to categorize someone who is enlightened. Also, Jesus Christ. <laughs> of course, we all heard of him. And Christ really means essentially the same thing. You know, Christ wasn't his last name. <laughs> when we talk about Christ, people think of Jesus. But really, Jesus was Jesus the Christ, and people called him that because they recognized, like, wow, this guy's special. There's something different about him. He's the Christ. Okay. <laughs> then also, um, Lao Tzu, who wrote the wisdom book called the Tao Te Ching, which I'm not all really that familiar with. A lot of these things I've just come to know within the last few years because I've been immersed in Christianity for most of my life. I'm 39 now and I was, I was like hmm, really immersed fully in a Christian belief system uh, until I was 35 and then I whew, awoke out of it. So let's talk about that. What is awakening? So awakening is when you make a belief shift that contains at the core of that shift the knowing that you are best off <laughs> to be living from your heart, to be following what feels right to you that you are good and trustworthy at your core and that if you live freely and let that freedom blossom, that you will find enlightenment, that you will find happiness, peace, that place of arrival where you know you feel like you're at home, okay? So that's awakening. So the human condition as we grow up and go through our particular childhoods and we become conditioned with belief systems. And what society does is it, 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 it essentially puts us asleep because it slowly, step by step, day by day, 
choice by choice, it builds into us all these thoughts and all these ideas that we're not best off to live freely, that we're not free. It really robs us of our freedom. Um, and it's an unconscious process that happens. And it really is like I've described before, it's like the wind-up toy. You know, in order to have the wind-up toy work and to enjoy it, it has to get wound up first. It has to have tension added to it. It has to have kind of like a, a conflict built into it. And then when you let go, that conflict, that potential energy, is what creates the experience of the toy working and functioning properly. And that's really how human life happens, is <laughs> our childhood conditioning, um, which is mostly fully ensconced by the age of 14. It winds us up. And then awakening is really like the unwinding. Okay, so awakening is really more of like a mental shift. Okay, it happened to me on November 11th, 2011. I had this realization. I was pondering what unconditional love means. I was sitting on an airplane. I've told this story before. And as I thought about what it means, what unconditional love means, and I started to realize I don't know what God is. But if there's one thing I feel just to my core that I know, it's like whatever God is, it's it loves me unconditionally. And then I started to know, oh, unconditionally means no conditions. And so if I don't have to live to please God, if there are really no conditions on the acceptance of who I am, if God created me, he wants me to be me. You know, it's just like if you plant flowers, you want them to be them. You, you want them to be what they are because you planted them, because you want to experience their beauty. And to try to control them or change them just doesn't really feel right. And so I realized on that day, that was when I started to awaken. So my, my belief system started to shift. Okay, so what's the difference between awakening and enlightenment? Well, awakening is when the belief structures start to change. Okay, see, there's one source of universal truth. Okay, there's, a, there's essentially, there's truths that are embedded in the universe around us. And there are themes in everything. That's why we see sacred geometry in all things. And why the same patterns tend to repeat the same shapes, the same themes. Like if you look at all the world religions over history, there's so many of the same themes. You know, there's like a Jesus figure, a Christ figure in lots of different religions. You know, there's a beautiful documentary called Zeitgeist, which is on Netflix. And it does a great job of laying out how there's so many of the same themes that appear in different parts of history, different parts of the world. And the coincidental nature of them is just, it's too much, you know, for the mind um, to write it off as coincidence. And so when we really take an honest look at those things and all the similarities between the religions and um, the way that people have lived over, you know, thousands and thousands of years, you know, there's a knowing like, okay, there's kind of this universal knowledge that's built into this universe and we can tap into it, okay? That's what intuition is. We sit in silence and just allow things to come up to us. We start to have really what can be considered like downloads, okay? And I talk to many, many people on a daily, daily basis who are getting similar downloads. You know, you, you read a book and it starts to get your mind going and you sit with it, you sit with it, and then all of a sudden, boom, it's like puzzle pieces coming together. And it feels so right because that's what happens with truth is it resonates, you know? It resonates, it's self-evident. Meaning as it's experienced, there's just a deep knowing like, oh yeah, this is, this is true. <laughs> okay, so what is enlightenment? Enlightenment is kind of, it's the place of arriving. So you're, as you're, the mind awakes then what is the only thing in the way between the knowing of you know, being good at your core and that you're, you're able to live freely and that's the best place to be, okay? And then actually being there and living from that place. That's the difference. The awakening, again, is like the mental shift. <laughs> but lots of you have experienced and you start to realize like, oh, I can live freely and I can be who I am. But then as you engage with other people, it, it's hard to do because your body 
doesn't necessarily want to cooperate. You know, you get triggered by other people and you want to speak your truth. And on some level, you know that that's the best place to be, but then you find yourself not able to do it. You know, you know that love is kind of the glue that holds everything together. And it's the spark of life that kind of is shared amongst all things. But then you find yourself going, you're like, I know that love is the truth. But now, you know, I'm not living it. And that can create a whole lot of confusion and dissonance while you're waking up. Because it's like, I know these truths, but why am I not able to live them? Why do I still get so angry and annoyed and frustrated or depressed or anxious? Okay? And what those things are, it's really all just emotional debris that's between the awakened mind and then the full experience of enlightenment which is when those truths and those knowings start to become a part of your everyday life and they really become who you are. And so the pro once the mind is awakened to these universal truths and knowing that, hey, living freely, living from my heart, following my intuition, that that's the way to this peace that we're all looking for and that our conditioning has really kind of pulled away from us. Okay, so the path from awakening into enlightenment is to, like I always talk about, feel the feelings. Okay, get in tune with the, the body and the emotions because emotions are energy in motion. And okay, there's stagnant, stagnant energy in our body. When you get triggered, you get annoyed, you get frustrated, it's really just parts of yourself that haven't come alive yet, parts of your body that haven't really started fluctuating and functioning and moving freely, okay? And as that happens, okay, you've had an awakening in the mind, but then enlightenment is when the mind and the body and the spirit all come into alignment. And that might sound really spiritual, but it's really not. It's, it's really scientific in the sense that as we release and express emotions and feel our feelings and start to become more in tune with who we really are, and we no longer have parts of ourselves sequestered and pushed away and hiding in our unconscious. So during an awakening, it's like all that's in the unconscious of who we are. You know, we don't even really know. We've never seen who we are. You know, as I was awakening and coming towards enlightenment, like. I knew each step was going to kind of show me a new part of who I am and I never knew, you know, the fullness of who I am. And boy, as it starts to become more of a reality and it's a very gradual process that day by day, you know, as you take steps to, to live in your freedom, feel your feelings, express your emotions. Yeah, you know, you come up against obstacles. They're like these energetic barriers and you feel through them. You feel through them. You know, anxiety is like your body telling you and your mind telling you like oh when I felt this before you know I used to get hurt you know maybe I used to get hit or used to get shamed by mom and dad and so anxiety is your body and your mind kind of telling you like oh don't go this way because you could get hurt okay and a way to get through anxiety is it, really what anxiety means is that you have parts of you that haven't been taken care of that you weren't allowed to take care of so there's usually anger okay so when you feel anxious the best way to deal with it is to be in a safe place you know, go a place and express anger, you know, start to, to yell, you know, grab a towel and twist it as hard as you can. You, know, you need to move emotion because anxiety is just like stored up energy. Like, oh, no, no, I can't go there. I can't go there. And your body's trying to protect you. Your mind's trying to protect you from pain and hurt. Okay, but it can keep you hemmed in. And as long as that anxiety and depression is really just the state of, of living out of alignment with who you really are. You know, you, you, your, your upbringing has kind of caused you to kind of split parts of yourself off. And so you're not living freely. Okay, you're living as this one person and who you really are is very different in a lot of ways. You know, much more expressive, much more alive, much more free to say exactly what you think and say what you want to say and have your ideas and share your ideas. But you've been surrounded by people who couldn't handle that and who kind of put pressure on you to stay down. And so it's kind of gotten you in the state where you're living as one person and, and that person is depressed <laughs> because depression is really just a sign that's like, hey, you're not living free. It's like if a flower looks wilted and looks kind of depressed. It's because it doesn't have the adequate sunshine and rainwater, but if it does, it comes alive, okay? And so enlightenment is landing in the place of fullness. As you do your emotional work and you clear that debris, there's a day when you know your heart will never close again. And there's a day when you know that you're just at home and you're feeling alive okay so i want to give you encouragement that if you're awakening okay that your mind is changing as you do your emotional work you can find that home base called enlightenment and you'll get there someday love you